Hey guys, this is Attorney Anderson. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on with my live video feeds, <clears throat> whether Facebook is playing games with them or not, uh, but I wanted to uh, record the uh, Governor Northam order explained. Uh, I did it earlier, uh, and you guys were saying it was going in and out. It was choppy. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why that's happening, so I'm just re-recording it for content so that it's clear. So, Governor Northam used his emergency powers today, and he said that due to uh, threats that have been made, actionable threats, uh, they, he is declaring the Capitol uh, a gun-free zone. All right, so let me just talk about that. Um, at the news conference, he said that they had received threats uh, from out-of-state militia, that they were going to storm the Capitol, they were going to weaponize drones, um, that there were clear lines of sights, meaning shooter sights, uh, into the Capitol. Um, no law enforcement really said this. This was all coming from the governor. And so basically he's saying that due to the threats that have been made, which he considers actionable threats, then the, um, uh, the emergency powers that the governor has can move forward. Now, I do want to say, uh, you know, the, the whole thing about uh, House Bill 20 from 2012, um, that is codified in 44-146.15 of the Code of Virginia. And in that code section, in paragraph three, um, it says that the governor is not restricted from being able to uh, limit people to uh, keep and bear arms, except, and this is except, in the extent necessary to ensure public places, uh, public safety in three designated places. One, any facility designated or used by the governor, okay? Two, any political subdivision of the Commonwealth. And three, uh, any governmental entity as an emergency shelter for the purposes of sheltering persons. So those are the three different places where um, those, that exceptions apply. So the Capitol grounds are a political subdivision of the Commonwealth. So if we buy the governor's argument that a lawful, um, credible threat has been made and that he needs to make this a gun-free zone because of the credible threats, then under the emergency powers, he does have that. The remedy would be to seek an, injun an injunction. That's going to require somebody to file a complaint uh, in the federal district court in Richmond. It has to be filed right away. And a judge would have to determine whether or not that credible threat existed and whether the government was properly using his um, emergency powers. Is all that going to happen before Friday? Mm. I don't know. That, that's a lot of a uh, lot of legal lifting between now and then. Now, let me just g give the practical advice. Obviously, no guns at the Capitol, okay, on the Capitol grounds or in the Capitol buildings. Um, you can have guns, but they can't be on the Capitol grounds. So if you plan on having guns, uh, you would have to be off the Capitol grounds. If you get caught with a firearm and this order is still in place, then you can be subject to, um, you know, problems with law enforcement. And that's not something that, that anybody wants to see happen. All right. Um, so if you're going to bring firearms, you need to stay off of the Capitol Square and out of the Capitol building um, to be compliant with this and not have trouble with law enforcement. Um, also, helmets and shields, those are off. Um, so I don't know what, why, you know, 100%. I mean, that was kind of from the Charlottesville thing. Um, this ban goes into effect on Friday, 5 p.m. till Tuesday at 5 p.m. So that's uh, that's where we are. And I uh, hope that gives you clear information of what to do uh, about Lobby Day. Um, you're not going to be allowed to have any firearms on the Capitol Square uh, pursuant to this order. I mean, unless a court says otherwise, unless somebody's going to file that. I'll keep you up to speed if I see anything happen. All right, thanks.